Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Salar Khan YouTube channel. In the previous video, we concluded that there was a huge amount of gap current or that R current. And that is a problem. Uh, and I told you this is an insulation problem and we have to overcome it. We have to look for the solution. One solution, uh, you know, the, the problem is with the electron. So that is present due to nature and we cannot get rid of that. The next was uh, uh, some of us suggested that we use metals with a high order function, but that will not work. Why? Because then that would be un that would not be a good conductor. And 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 we took the example of a circuit breaker. We explained it. So the circuit breaker is a normally closed switch. So under that closed condition, then the resistance would increase, and hence the voltage drop would increase, hence the losses would increase, and efficiency would decrease if the work function is high. So we need to look for something to, you know, uh, limit the arc current. One thing that comes into mind is that the main culprit is electron. Our main culprit is electron. So if we do something to reduce the number of electrons, how can we do this? We cannot eliminate it because it is present due to nature. But we can a little bit of a reduce it and what is that? So have you heard the name of electronegativity? Yes. So if I introduce an electronegative gas in the chamber, so that could, maybe that would work. So this I am working on an idea that I want to capture some electrons. The electronegative gas does what? That it would capture electrons and itself would become a negative ion. So then the current due to the negative ion would be less. Why? Because the velocity of an ion is less. Okay. So let's say I give the heading that I'm talking about electronegativity over here. What is electronegativity? It is a property of an atom by virtue of which it gains or accepts electron. So this is electronegativity. So I will introduce an electronegative gas in the chamber. With electronegativity, we'll talk about an attachment coefficient eta. We have eta, which is called the attachment coefficient. As we had the tonsions first ionization coefficient. Uh, similarly, we have an attachment coefficient which is defined as what which is defined as the number of attaching collisions made by an electron in drifting one centimeter this is the number of attaching collisions over that we had about ionization over here this is the number of attaching collisions made by an electron per centimeter drifting towards the in the direction of the electric field read it out from the book so which means what now let's say if i go further eta is you could say is the ability to 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 catch electrons right yes so which means now you have got two things with the introduction of an electronegative gas now you have got two processes number one is the ionization process which is must which will happen right and the second one that now you have got is the attachment process yes which now you have introduced by electronegativity the ionization charges are let's say represented by d n i which is you know equal to what which is equal to alpha times the number of total charges n times dx in the metallic strip that we talked about if you want me to draw the diagram again so let's say if this is a strip of length dx at a distance x from the cathode this is my cathode this is my anode and this is supplied by a potential uh, v and and the distance between the electrodes is d so if uh, n are the total number of electrons between in the distance d and i represent the charges in the metallic strip due to ionization and then similarly due to attachment i would write d and a for instance over here and over here i will put a negative sign so just to show the opposite of that sign and alpha represents ionization so eta represents what eta represents a 
uh, attachment and then n again and dx again for the strip so which means the total number of charged species the total number of charged species in the strip would be what so total i would write would be uh, then dn let's say would be then dni plus dna which is equal to then i would write an alpha minus eta and n time dx is taken common now if i put dn by n and then you know you can do the integrations by yourself dn by n and this would be equal to alpha minus eta times dx do the integrations right over here from n naught to n over here from 0 to d what do you get what do you get after final integration you get is that n is equal to n naught exponential of alpha minus eta times d so this is it now this marker is not working properly let me take another one so n is equal to n naught uh, exponential of alpha minus eta into d yes yes but we have negative ions formed as well we have negative ions formed let me talk about ng ng is let's say the number of negative ions this is let's say the number of negative ions so what do you have the number of negative ions formed in the strip dx would be what so dng would be equal to eta attachment coefficient times n dx isn't it like this it is if i put the value of n so i would have an eta and not exponential of alpha minus eta times d and then with respect to dx isn't it like this it is for instance let me take this at a distance x as a variable let's say for now is that fine it is or for ng you would integrate this thing and when you integrate this thing integrating this thing with respect to x i am very weak in, in integrations you know that very well so you can just do it by yourself if i integrate this this gives me ng is equal to what eta times n naught eta times n naught divided by alpha minus eta times exponential of alpha minus eta times then i uh, uh, will put an x and then plus k x this comes out to be this and then plus k where k is the constant of integration and you find it from the initial conditions you find from the initial condition and what is the initial condition so initial condition is that the negative ions and the electrons move towards the anode so which means that they are caught or absorbed at the anode but if i take it at the cathode so if i take it at the cathode which means that x would be equal to zero over here so if at cathode the x is equal to zero this implies what that the number of negative ions would be zero over here yes yes so the number of negative ions are zero at the cathode fine yes so just put it over here ng is equal to zero so k would come out to be what k would come out to be negative uh, eta and naught upon alpha minus eta exponential of alpha minus eta put a d put an x whatever you want uh, well uh, i don't have a, 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 an exponential term because exponential term would be exponential of zero would be one i have an x right yes so now put it over here so ng my ng would come out to be uh, eta and naught alpha minus eta exponential of alpha minus eta into x and then plus so you have a minus eta and not alpha minus eta isn't it like this it is now this is for the negative ions now what do you have is the negative ions and the electrons both will move towards the anode so at x is equal to d the total gap current you can write the the negative ions and electrons both will move where will move towards anode so what can i write is that the anode x 
so or let's say at x is equal to d which means that n naught so at x is equal to d i can write the total current the total current would be what then n t let's say so this would be n plus ng isn't it like this it is so ng is this and plus n you already have which is over here so put down the values put down the values so nt would come out to be what so uh, n is n naught exponential of alpha minus eta times d plus n eta n naught alpha minus eta exponential of alpha minus eta times x is equal to d and then minus eta n naught alpha minus eta right now take the lcm so nt would be equal to what uh, n naught exponential of alpha minus eta times d and then multiplied with an alpha minus eta right yes and then plus n eta and not exponential of alpha minus eta into d minus eta and not and this whole divided by alpha minus eta open this thing up nt is equal to multiply this with an alpha n not alpha exponential of alpha minus eta into d right yes then a minus n naught eta exponential of alpha minus eta into d then plus eta n naught exponential of alpha minus eta into d minus n naught into eta whole divided by alpha minus eta so minus n naught eta and this thing cancels out nt comes out to be what nt comes out to be uh, so i could take n naught as common uh, has the book taken it as common i will just check i will just check just give me a minute yes so n naught is taken common and you have an alpha n naught is taken common and you have got an alpha exponential of alpha minus eta into d and then you have a minus n naught uh, sorry minus eta divided by alpha minus eta isn't it like this it is what can you do else then that the, the the total number of charge carriers the current is depending on the charge carriers so i t now you can write it as what i t you can write is as uh, 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 i naught uh, and then you have what alpha exponential of alpha minus eta times d minus eta divided by alpha minus eta right yes this is i this will now be the current in the presence of an electronegative gas in the presence of an electronegative gas without without the presence of an electronegative gas you had i is equal to i naught exponential of alpha into d it was something like this isn't it it is this is without an electronegative gas this is with the electronegative gas you put some numerical values over here you put some numerical values you will come to know that with the electronegative gas i t is far less than i that is without the electronegative gas so which means what have you done by introducing an electronegative gas in between the chambers in between the two electrodes in in the in the interruption chamber of the circuit breaker what have you done you have reduced the gap current you have reduced the gap current the gap current depends on two things this gap current or that arc current in the circuit breaker that depends on two things number one is the number of charge carriers or the number of electrons and the second is their velocity so have a look first of all the the number of charge carriers you are reducing the number of electrons you are reducing why because you are capturing them and you are forming a negative ion and secondly you are also reducing the velocity because the velocity of an ion is greater is less than the velocity of the of the what of the electron so which means the collision ionization is also ineffective it does not have that much of an energy 
So it means that you are going for a cumulative process. You are capturing the electrons, so you are reducing the number of charge carriers. Also, you are reducing the speed because the speed of the ion is less as compared to the uh, as compared to the electron, right? So the use of an electronegative gas has uh, has you know reduced my gap current. My gap current has reduced. So it has solved my problem partially. And why do I say partially? It has solved my problem partially because it has not completely removed the arc. In the context of the circuit breaker when they are open, you have an arc. What is the arc? Arc is the ionization. Why is that established? Because you have a very high potential when the arc, when the contacts of the circuit break are open. You have a very high potential in between them. So that potential is enough to break down any gas or air present over there. So that arc is formed. It ion, the ionized channel. So you have reduced the current by using an electronegative gas inside there. But arc is an arc. Arc is an arc. It is there. We have not finished it yet. If you say now this is just a weak arc. No, we cannot say it like this. What we have done is we have reduced the current, but the arc is still there. The current is still there. The arc current is about 100 times the normal current. The normal current, uh, uh, the fault current, let's say in the worst possible case is the symmetrical three-phase short circuit. So that would be about 10 times the normal rating capacity. But over here in the arc current, that is about 100 of time. So what if it goes to the generator and to a transformer? You have reduced it, but you have not finished it. You have not finished the arc completely. So that is why a problem remains. And for that, we have the next video. In the next video, we will try to just finish it up. Electronegative gas most commonly used is what is SF6. SF6 that is most commonly used. The major properties are it obeys the major properties of dielectric strength. It has a high dielectric strength. Plus, an important property is that it provides cooling effect. It provides cooling effect. So, so a very high temperature is associated, I told you, with the R. So, the SF6 has this superior property over air that it provides cooling as well. Now, uh, you could have had a question that chlorine is. A, a, a highly electronegative. Fluorine is highly electronegative, but the answer is that I told you they are toxic. So we had a, a discussion in the very first video that uh, they should obey these properties. So chlorine is a toxic gas. So SF6 is not toxic. It uh, has dielectric strength high. Also a very superior property is that it is a coolant as well. So the thing is that my arc is still here, okay? My arc has not finished. We have just reduced the current, okay? So the solution to the final solution may be in the next video. See you there very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye.